Tanshi, hello, bonjour. My name is David Garneau and I'm curator of Gawatsi Radage. And I'm here in Regina and my back in the background are my bunnies in our front yard. And I'd like to tell you about some of the artworks at the Stuart Hall Art Gallery. The title of the fifth edition of the Contemporary Native Art Biennale was gifted to Baca 2020 by Kanawage elder Odziza Kunra and faith keeper Niyo Ya Ranen. They explained to exhibition Ini Koner Fe Mullen that the phrase evokes the interconnectedness of all things. It describes kinship as a continuous circle and conveys the idea that these relations require our active maintenance. The artworks selected for Stuart Hall reflect these concepts and relations. As part of our curatorial strategy, we ask senior artists to select kin to show with them. So these kin could be family members or community members, students or mentors. <clears throat> anyone that they felt artistic kinship with. Of the Stuart Hall artist, Dylan Miner chose two students, Kay Mayer and Graham Paradis. Kay has a remarkable video about fish and ecology and even, even surveillance of fish and the kind of scientific attitude taken towards fish uh, in Stuart Hall. And Graham is showing his work, uh, beaded work at Art Muir. The moment I first saw the Stuart, the first time I saw the Stuart Hall space with the river nearby and ex proximity to Kanawage, I thought of my recent grad, grad student Margaret Orr's paintings. So normally curators shy away from showing students or, or friends and, and certainly mentors, um, which makes sense until the exhibition is about kinship. And I'm very uh, sort of, fr I feel freed up to be able to show people who are students and friends and who are also remarkable artists. And, and Margaret's work came to mind right away. In late September of 1984, Hydro-Quebec opened the Canapisco River spill gates 270 miles upstream from Limestone Falls at the Canapisco River. A torrent of water swept towards Angava Bay. At their traditional river crossing, thousands of caribous were swept over the falls and drowned. Margaret and her community were devastated by the loss, but it was only 30, 34 years later that she could make art about the disaster. While the works in this exhibition commemorate the disaster, they are not graphic or mournful. Instead, the artist maps her territory, the land of her Cree people, and the animal kin. The paintings are about the interrelationships and interdependencies and how mega, pro mega projects that primarily service people living in the South uh, have devastating impacts on these home territories. Land water, for example, is an actual an aerial view of the Canapisco River and the site of the drowning is marked by a very faint red. Curation, especially of contemporary art, of fresh works and relations, is often marked by serendipity. So by chance, last fall I was in Vancouver presenting at a gigantic anthropology conference and I fell into a conversation with uh, Arndt Schneider, a professor of sociology from Norway. I'd never met this guy before and we talked about our various projects. Uh, the year before I was in Norway, Sami territory, for the first time, and I described Margaret Orr's work to Arndt and how it resonated with Sami artist Merritt and Sarah's a multiple project called Pile of Sampe, uh, which we have in this exhibition. Merritt comes from a reindeer herding family and as a means to control Sami movement across their territories, their territories are in the north of Norway, Sweden, um, Finland, and also Russia. It, they, their territory precedes all those um, nation-state claims for those territories by thousands of years. Um, but the governments have been trying to cramp the clamp down on the reindeer herding, which goes against those countries' borders, by uh, reducing the herds for individual Sami herders. So Moret's brother, um, Josette uh, Arnie Sarah, fought two trials to defend his indigenous rights. Um, this was where the government was requiring him to reduce his herd by, by killing them. So he won the first but lost the appeal before Nor Norway's Supreme Court. 
As a visual aid to her brother's claim, Maret made two works documented in our exhibit by large photographs. Pile of Sampi from 2016 shows 200 raw re reindeer heads. Maret and Sarah stacked these uh, reindeer heads outside the courthouse in Tana, where her brother was being tried. These are the heads of the animals that the government made him slaughter. The artist wanted to add this concrete fact to the court's abstract proceedings. The second photo, Pile of Sampi from 2017, shows, shows a sculpture or a, almost a textile of 400 reindeer skulls that are arranged very aesthetically in this grid. So there are 400 uh, skulls. They've all uh, showed they've been shot and they're hung like a curtain re resembling two of the Same flags. So I was arrested by how the Same were being controlled through colonial management and the destruction of their culture and animals and how that was similar to what happened to Plains people here on Turtle Island but also in the 19th century but also to the Cree of Northern Quebec in uh, the 19, 1980s as Margaret Orr's work documented. And I really felt that they need to come together. In fact, um, I saw a light box uh, piece, also called Pile of Sampi, that Marat did in uh, Norway, and it had two panels. One was showing this pile of uh, reindeer heads, and juxtaposed to it was one of these old uh, photographs from like 150 years ago of bison skulls. So she was already making this connection, and I, I felt we really had to bring them bring them here. But back to Arndt, that scholar from Norway. So with great excitement, he uh, told me about an artist project he had written about. Surely I knew about German artist Rainier Wittenborn and writer Klaus Bergart's work with Margaret Orr's community. Well, surely I didn't. And it was just this chance conversation at an anthropology conference in Vancouver that I was made aware of this uh, remarkable work. So in 1979-80, these uh, Germans, they, they went to the James Bay Cree to actually to Margaret Orr's community and they did a five-month collaborative project with the elders and knowledge keepers there. The photo text project and there were some drawings and paintings as well surveyed the land, the animals, the plants and knowledge of the territory and presented, the artists then presented their family findings through map works, uh, drawings, photos and texts. Two years later they, the pair returned to, to Chesapeake and showed the works in the new school uh, for the recently relocated community. Because of that uh, hydroelectric dam and the, and the water problems, the community had to move to a, to a new place. And so the works were shown there at, the, at a school, a new school, but also in the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, I was amazed, uh, but full of regret, that I wouldn't be able to bring this project to Baca. So, you know, Baca is being launched in May, and this news happened in the fall. And we talked back and forth, and um, Art was getting more and more in insistent, and I was sort of shrinking back. I squirmed, and finally I said, you know, buddy, if you want this to happen, I want this to happen, can you do this work? So um, I called uh, the artist, the German artist, um, and he didn't have access to internet or email or anything. And so I thought, this is not going to happen. But Arndt stepped up and working over the phone with Rainier Wittenborn, um, we managed to assemble um, some photographs that we then reproduced here. And then Arndt wrote a wonderful essay uh, that sort of awakens this project and explains its significance. Because it's an early example of contemporary non-Indigenous artists working with an Indigenous community respectfully uh, in their territories and in the following protocols that they required. And I'm grateful to have included this work at Gawad Sir uh, So this, this isn't all of the works in the show. Um, I should at a later date talk about uh, some of the, the other projects, particularly um, Dylan Miner's work. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy the exhibition. Thank you.